journey working in the K-pop industry as a K-pop trainee. <laughs> if whoever above is saying like I can't do something and I have to do this thing, mm -hmm. I just thought I'm supposed to obey them. Oh. I didn't know I had a choice in my own life to decide right. what I wanted to do. Welcome back to another episode of Proof Review Pod. I am Hannah, your host, and we have Hannah, my guest, on today. <laughs> it's very confusing when we're in the room together. Always. It was funny because my sister called you tall Hannah, and I was like, uh -huh. so what am I? Tell me what I am, if if that's tall Hannah. And right. She's like, mm, mm. You are At least she didn't say short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're not short. I'm like... You're not short. I think I'm short. I think I'm short. I think no, 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 no. You're little. not short. I think you're normal. Oh, but then you're like model. I always not like mother. More no, like she, avatar. No, she like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's the yeah similarity right. That there. is so <laughs> funny, dude. Oh my gosh, no, not and you're wearing blue. And they're wearing blue. Uh, yeah, but you guys probably recognize Hannah from another episode we did with June. But we, me and Hannah reached our year anniversary we our did. year friendship yay. yay um yeah people always ask us like oh how'd you guys meet um and so we met through a mutual friend but our our friendship has like blossomed since then mm -hmm. um i feel like i'm like constantly like learning from you likewise yes and so it's just been a beautiful friendship but i kind of wanted to like delve into your life mm -hmm. because I think you have like such a unique story. <laughs> she has Not a story. Really. <laughs> no, you do too. Yeah, and, and I think right, like that's the beautiful thing about like meeting people is mm -hmm. like everyone has their own story. You just have to like kind of dig in order yeah. to um, get to like the roots of it and whatnot. But um, yeah, I know we touched upon it in our last episode together, but mm -hmm. I guess. Do you want to share a little bit about like your journey working in the K-pop industry as a K-pop trainee? <laughs> um, like, how did that how did that go down? How did you get there? It's gonna sound really cliche, uh -huh. but I kid you not, I was walking um, to Hollywood Bowl oh. because long time ago there used to be like a K-pop festival. Oh, I remember Do you that. Remember? Fest I would go every year. Yeah, 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 it was a big deal. Oh, yeah, I don't know what happened to it, but. I was walking with my friend, and then this lady pulled me aside. I know. Whoa. I know. I know. I was so fearless. I was 10. Oh. She pulled me aside, and then I remember it was the bathroom right before you, like, reached the hill hill. Oh, okay, okay. I know exactly what yeah, yeah, you're yeah. talking about. And she was like, hey, like, are you interested in doing, like, music, dance? And I was like, oh, I dance. And I sing. And like, like, I got that covered, lady. Like, I'm sorry, what? But she's like, oh, great. Like, can I just film you doing it? Oh. Now, if you think about it, it's <laughs> creepy. <laughs> but like, back then, it was just like, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was like, sure. So I just did whatever. <gasps> like, song that popped into my head. Oh my gosh, you're literally fearless. L literally. And I danced probably to no music. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you acapella danced? That is, that's literally wild. Oh my gosh. <sighs> like, that's like when, you know, at like family reunions and they're like, <laughs> dance for us. And it's like, no, yeah. that's weird. You're literally yeah. out there dancing. Yeah. I did all that. And then she gave me her like Byung Up. And then I remember I took it and I gave it to my parents. But back then, that company wasn't known for music necessarily oh they were big about other imports oh so my parents just thought okay it's probably like a scammer or like something weird right they just forgot about it but then they reached out to my mom because she has like a big korean dance studio in la mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. figured it out they contacted her they asked me for a second audition oh so this time i went with my mom and we went to the casting director's hotel room Oh, whoa. Yeah. I feel like back then, yeah, that was like she a was, little bit more normal. Yeah, and I went with my mom. Right, right. And I did the same thing. And then she was like, oh, are you funny? Oh, is Hannah funny? <laughs> is Hannah funny? Dude, every every freaking dinner, I'm no, like, I'm just ruining no, my makeup. No, Thank you so much. You're funny. Yeah. No, you're I funny. think I've been I think we're funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I auditioned. Um, 
She flew back the next day. I got a call back and I signed within that week. Oh my gosh. A contract. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And back then the contract was 10 years. So I was bound to the company starting my first single. Oh my god. So gosh. they could technically keep me forever. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, I did so that. you were so that happened when you were ten? When I was ten. Okay. And then so um like I guess like timeline wise, mm-hmm. like were you training out here? Like mm-hmm. what did that oh. For the first five years, they were trying to do it here and make oh. us like the first Korean girl group to debut in America. Oh, nice. So we had all the top vocal coaches. We had all the top choreographers back then. Like everybody that did like Beyonce, Madonna, oh Britney Spears. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Yeah. Britney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Britney yeah, yeah. is my Britney. I know. I know. Oh. So I did that. I went to school. But obviously with the laws here, I couldn't train like every single day. Mm -hmm. like they do in korea because i had to go to school right right so it was just like late night trainings weekends i never had a weekend it was pretty chill i liked it because i like dancing singing whatever right it sounds like low-key an after school program Mm. right yeah yeah yeah. and then we would just do what they called eval which is evaluations every month oh okay oh Mm -hmm. um yeah i've like heard about evals yeah but my only context is that lisa loves eval day like apparently she loves it mm-hmm. and apparently everyone else in the industry hates it and so i mean what what goes down during eval days i think the first couple years i liked it right because oh. i was such an attention seeker mm, me too <laughs> <laughs> i love attention <laughs> yeah and like it was just uh we had to prepare one solo song a rap song like a pop song a korean r&b song freestyle choreography and then a group choreography and a group song oh wow so there was a lot. That That's we a lot. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know what I had to, but I had to prepare like comedy skits. Oh, because you're the funny one. I guess. <gasps> That's so <laughs> cr- Oh my God. Yeah. So I had to do that. And then. <laughs> do, do you remember any? You do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just see you do it. <laughs> Thinking back, not funny. Not funny. But, like, made you who you are today. <laughs> like, I feel like when things are, like, you know, a little a little more down, like, you're mm-hmm. able to, like, break break the ice, like, break the seriousness. Like, yeah. I think that's, like a, like, a great quality to have, you know? Yeah, just fearless, I think. Overly confident and fearless, for sure. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then I think right when puberty hit, that's when I started realizing... Oh, like I'm getting judged every day. Oh, like I'm not good enough. Oh, like I'm not skinny enough. Oh, oh, I'm not pretty enough. Like stuff like that started to accumulate. And that's when I started like fearing eval day. Oh, like it I was like see. a countdown. Yeah, that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I feel like growing up, like I was so confident. Like, mm-hmm. right. You don't know like how like cruel the world can be. Exactly. And then. Like, I mean, going through middle school, comparing myself to all these girls, Mm -hmm. like, that's when social media first started popping up. Like, I literally can remember exactly when the insecurity started creeping in. Mm -hmm. And so, I guess, like, same for you. It was kind of, like, manifested through evals? Yeah, I think so. Because, like, even before I signed with a Korean company and did the K-pop stuff... I was a child actor here in Hollywood mm. since like four and I was modeling since then. And like, I I didn't care. Like if I didn't get a job to me, I don't even remember that. Like, I just remember when I did book a gig, like going on set, it was just fun. I was just hanging around. I was playing. Right, right. But I think you're right. We're like starting the eval. That's when I started being more self-conscious, being aware. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then that's when I started getting in my head. And I think that's when, like, you know, body dysmorphia oh, yeah. started. And like, eating disorder. Mm. And just being more reserved. And definitely creating a persona of who I thought I had to be. Right. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, like, during this time, like, were the people training you? Like, would they, like, straight straight up like tell you like you're not skinny enough like you Mm -hmm. need to stop like it was very like outright just insulting almost yeah now that i think about it because like they're like 50 year old men right Mm -hmm. 
And they're telling like 10, 11 year old girls, prepubescent girls, like, oh, like you're chubby. Oh, you're not pretty enough. Oh, oh, like you need to do this to your face. You need to do that. Right. But it's like my face hadn't even fully developed. Right, right. And so, yet they're pushing all of this. Exactly. Hmm. And so how are you? I mean, like, I'm sure, like, in hindsight, you processed a bit more. Mm -hmm. But, like, I guess, like, during that time, like, did you just take everything on of, like, oh, yeah, that does need to be fixed? Like, how are you feeling about it, I guess, like, in that moment? I think, to be honest, I'm very grateful to my parents because especially my mom, she's a very, she's very strong. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know another way to explain her, but she's very strong so she really made me secure in myself until I think the age of 17, which was when I went out for Miss Korea. That oh. was like a whole nother stage where I was like, oh, like, fuck, there's so many pretty girls out there. Like, am I supposed to look like this? Why don't I look like that? Why am I darker than the average oh, Korean girls? Oh, yeah. And that's when I started to really like get into my head and just let all my insecurities devour me i don't know much about pageant life mm -hmm. i know like, <laughs> like toddlers and tiaras like you know what i mean like yeah. i know like very surface level mm -hmm. but i guess like the culture of it do you think it's like way more intense than like what you had experienced prior or like i guess if you had to like rank like kind of like, the toughness mm -hmm. of pageant world versus, let's say, like, dance world versus, like, K-pop world. Like, mm -hmm. where where does that rank? Oh, that's tough. I mean, I think it's much different now than mm. when I went out. Because, like, like you said, when we were growing up, that's when social media just started. Yeah. So it wasn't like we had all the access that people do nowadays. So... I think there was less of a model that we could compare ourselves with. We would compare ourselves to like TV stars or like people we saw in the magazine. Oh, right. But like now it's like you look on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and you just compare yourself to everyone and everything. Yeah, yeah. No so I think if I went out now, then like I would just combust. No, oh, yeah. Like literally I'm exploding. Yeah. I can't deal. Uh, yeah. With I, this. I wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Um, and so, yeah, I guess like you said, 17, mm -hmm. Miss Korea. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Miss Korea 2017. <laughs> Is that correct? 2013. Oh, 2013. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, dude, I don't think you guys like realize like how much I've like tried to stalk Hannah and she's like so low key. <laughs> Like, I think I eventually found it, but I went through every single year. <laughs> I went through every single year. I was like, okay, nice. Um, and um, so, like, I also know that you moved. And mm -hmm. so when did when did that happen? I moved right after Miss Korea at oh, 17. Oh, okay, okay. And that was because the training program just decided. Well, yeah, because by then I was too old now oh. to debut in a girl group. Oh. So they wanted to transition me into modeling. I see. Okay. Modeling and acting, because they're like, you're too old. <laughs> At 17 years old, like, you're too old. You're too old. Oh, how, what was that experience like? Like, not debuting after however many years of, like, putting in work? Um, Looking back, I think I was extremely devastated and i think my pride and my ego was crushed at a young age mm. because it was like that was all i did like that was your life that was my life and then just because i aged out they were like oh not anymore oh my gosh but i just like moved on it was kind of like okay like onwards and upwards like what else am i gonna do and i just thought if whoever above is saying like i can't do something and i have to do this thing mm -hmm. i just thought i'm supposed to obey them oh i didn't know i had a choice in my own life to decide right what i wanted to do right especially because like you signed so young mm -hmm. like it's not like you're reading your own contract mm -hmm. like let alone like understanding what the right. terms are mm -hmm. and so i guess it's just like oh, okay this is this is my path. I'm yeah. accepting it. Yeah. Huh. And I thought I just 
might as well do the most that I can with this new career because I thought if I give up now and I decide like I don't want to do it Mm -hmm. I thought about oh my god everyone's gonna talk shit everyone's gonna be like oh she's a has-been or like you know Mm -hmm. like I just thought about what other people would expect me to have done but to be honest they don't give a fuck like right no one's paying attention to me. Like it's just, everyone's paying attention to themselves. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just me in my own head, oh. just like at eating myself and just thinking like I have to prove them wrong. I have to prove them wrong. Like, but like no one cares. Right, <laughs> so. dude. Wait, I like completely relate to that sentiment yeah. because I think like one of the most like defining experiences in my life is like. I got into college early, mm-hmm. went to college early, mm-hmm. and I hated my freshman year. Like, I was really? suffering <gasps> just because I don't think I was, like, mentally prepared mm. to go to college. It was, mm. like, right after junior year, oh, okay, I got into USC. Let's, I have no other choice. Mm-hmm. But, right, same, same yeah. as you. It's, yeah. like, I was too young to, like, think through the decision, and so I thought that this saying yes was the only Mm -hmm. option you know there was like no other consideration and even though i hated my freshman year i was like i'm not like literally dropping out Mm -hmm. changing schools all of that was not an option because i was thinking too much of like what other people would think of me Mm -hmm. i mean even now right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. this is a very like public facing platform and whatnot and so i think just like seeing how much other people talk about other people Mm -hmm. like i'm like oh they're probably talking about me in that same way but like in reality it's like oh it's only like the gossipers and the shit talkers who like are actually talking about you yeah yeah and And like you know like if you could think of it in a good way it's like that means you're relevant i guess right oh yeah (laughs) it's like oh you're hating okay i got haters yeah like i don't i feel like no matter what you do and no matter how good and like how pure and like an angel you are, there's always going to be those people that are trying to tear you down. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't satisfy everyone. We try to be as inclusive. We can't include everybody. But right. We try. Right. Mm, like, let's see them try. But like, we're not doing anything. <laughs> I know. It's, it's always like the observers Mm -hmm. like just the people commenting and watching Mm -hmm. that are like the most judgmental yeah and so yeah no i like i'm always like applauding people who like actually put in work actually like do the action (laughs) huh hey (laughs) trying trying out here um but yeah i guess like like what was your life like going to university in korea as well as modeling and whatnot uh i think to be honest i leaned a lot i leaned heavily towards alcohol oh that's fair but the culture in korea is is like social drinking is just normal Mm. and like that's how you create friendships that's how you close deals in like yeah business and so it was just i was always around it and also like even like trainee days like you're expected to you know go out and entertain the atmosphere and socially drink and make right. sure you network and yeah. la 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 the same with school mm. even when i was going to university like the hierarchy was so distinct if let's say a sophomore or a senior says like come out and drink like you have to oh. or rest, like or else our entire class would be i don't know how to say chip up you would get some sort of punishment well it's almost like ha- like hazing i guess yeah like hazing but isn't hazing supposed to be fun no oh no oh well, i feel like I, I, don't uh, I don't think so i feel like hazing is like oh i'm like gonna punish you in some sort of way like make you drink oh but that's like the extreme right or yeah like walk uh, around with your underwear or something like yeah, that? yeah yeah i think there are like more extreme stories like i've definitely like heard it but like oh. that's very like under the radar because people will right. get kicked off and like in trouble for it right. but that happens just like because i think hazing that's very much connected to like frat culture mm. and like sorority culture but then th- is this happening just like in university in general like without the frats um i think 
regular i don't know how to say it, not regular universities but like yonsei daekyo koryo de or iwade where it's like a bigger university with a bigger campus they do have some sort of like tongari oh but ours were so small oh i see that it was more of like by class okay that makes sense yeah just because like they knew everyone right mm. our class was just always so small the numbers that get accepted is really small so it was just it was all about like tongi sarang tongi sarang nara sarang that's what i don't even know what that is i think it's like an army term to be honest oh okay tongi like graduating class oh okay Oh, right? it's like tonggap. Is it? I don't know. Maybe. To be honest, I didn't even try bothering to understand. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you're just like, yeah, I get it now. Yeah, I accept like, it. Okay, so it was just like we were kind of like we weren't able to do things on our own. Oh, 단체 생활. Okay, so we had to be a team. Oh, we had to move by class. Cla- uh huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, okay. So it's a very like tight knit. Yeah. Type of culture. And I think so- it was because like army maybe mm. and it's like especially with arts or sports i heard those majors are very strict about the whole tanche oh i see because i think like one of the biggest cultural differences that i don't necessarily like get mm. is like the like the elder stuff mm. like i can totally respect like yeah respect your elders but definitely when i like meet people like from korea like directly from korea and there's like an automatic like question of oh what year are you like what year are you born and then i feel the dynamic change Mm -hmm. like it's like oh okay i'm older than you like i'm gonna treat you this Mm -hmm. way i always like feel it automatically and i'm like oh i don't know how to like navigate this like i don't know if i'm doing things wrong like i don't know if i'm overstepping my boundaries so it's always something that i like i think tread more lightly Mm -hmm. like on Mm -hmm. especially to like people who grew up in that culture from you know day one and so yeah i can imagine like in university especially a small university it's like and like where egos are attached because it's the arts Mm -hmm. it's it was probably like really intense it was very intense like uh, even like crossing your legs like we weren't allowed to cross our legs what because that's deemed to be very disrespectful in front of, like, older people. Interesting. And, like, there was, like, a way that we would have to bow. There's, like, a whole greeting. So if you're a senior okay. and I'm a freshman okay. and I saw you coming in. Yeah. I would have to run up to you, do yeah. the bow, 90 degrees, obviously. Oh, duh. And I would have, like, my little, like, intro sec- segment. Oh. Which would say, like, my graduating class. First and last name, mm-hmm. major, which department? Oh my gosh! And like, let's say you didn't see me. Oh, what's happening? But I that, saw you. Ooh, that night. That means your entire class is getting the hazing or punishment. <gasps> and so, would they just like make you drink? Like, what? Are you allowed to share? You don't have to share. It's more extreme. Okay. Um, just because I think it's better now. Even like. To be honest, seven, eight years ago, mm-hmm. professors like knew that this was happening and they kind of, they didn't instigate it, but they did think of it very old school minded where it was like, if you guys get punished together, then you work hard together, then oh. you make great art together and it's you become like, one. Oh my gosh. They're like literally trying to trauma bond you. <laughs> yeah (laughs) Yeah, it's like use your resources like you have an artist a photographer a dancer and like yeah exactly exactly oh my gosh that was like the original content house like you are a tiktok (laughs) house oh my gosh yeah 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 holy moly okay so they so teachers were just like kind of turn a blind eye like they're like "Mm." Mm -hmm. like it's fine you will make great art together (laughs) oh my gosh you will be in harmony yeah mm, that makes sense so do you feel like it worked like are you in harmony with your class (laughs) (laughs) i I don't know if we became i don't know if we were in harmony because fear (laughs) of punishment yeah uh but i mean 
we were a group of people that were crazy about the same art and creating great art and mm. creating something new and you know uplifting our culture and our traditions and our heritage so i think i kind of suppressed how bad it was right but i'm sorry to say this maybe i'm konde okay i am konde i don't know konde? uh like when you say oh back in my day oh okay 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 i don't Got know it. what the term is in english Old. is there a term <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when I became uh, um, upper class, mm. upperclassman, mm-hmm. upper class, and I saw like the newer freshmen come in. Right. When they did misbehave or they were rude, right. the first thing I thought of was, ah, it's because they didn't get hazed, mm. which is bad. Oh, I always joke, but like partially joke. <laughs> like bring back bullying <laughs> like we are we are raising weak kids well yeah that i agree that i agree that i agree you know that i agree yeah and like, they're very like oh my contract is nine to five. Oh, <laughs> oh you have work-life boundaries <laughs> which maybe they're the smarter ones maybe they're living mm-hmm. the right way right right yeah i mean i like question it too because yeah. i'm like had I not been forced to like work overtime or like put in work and like Mm -hmm. be hazed a little bit (laughs) like would I not have this mindset of like because I suffered you should suffer too (laughs) you know what I mean yeah 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 oh okay and then I've like been called a kyopo like so often Mm -mm. when like being in Korea as well and like I don't know I like feel I feel a type of way about it Mm -hmm. like I know that like it's like almost coming out of disrespect Mm -hmm. but like i mean for you like did you also like have similar experiences yeah i think we are ostracized as korean americans when we're in korea Mm -hmm. but it's not fair because like when you look like a foreigner they treat you with the utmost respect oh it's like very like white centric yeah very like oh you you You're made an it to American. America. Yeah. Yeah. American dream. Yeah. But like, if we look like us and we speak English, then they're kind of like, oh, uh-huh. like, uh-huh. like, uh huh. Like, right. Right. Like, but like, older people will be like, uh huh. Right. Right. Yeah. And like, when I try, I'm like, oh, I'm very embarrassed. But like, yeah. you told me, like, yeah. if you're in Korea, you gotta be Korean, mm. you know? Mm. But now that I'm here, I do get a lot of people saying, are you from Korea? Like, are you born in Korea? Oh, that's confusing. But I also get it because my mannerism, I think, is very. <laughs> You know, you know, I do know, <laughs> I do know, yeah. So it's like now I'm just like I don't even know. I feel like you're definitely living in the dash mm. between Korean and American more more so than I think I am. Like if I had to like pit us against each other, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so fucking confusing for you, uh. huh? Because like i'm like american Mm -hmm. you know like i don't i don't speak korean i don't have korean mannerisms like i never had to go through any sort of like elder (laughs) like respect (laughs) like hazing (laughs) like any of the experiences that you had to go Uh through Uh at such a like pivotal age right Mm -hmm. like i think that all happened when you were like the most almost impressionable you know for sure and so Oh my gosh, that must have been like so confusing coming back as well. Oh yeah. The huh. first year was so bad actually. I remember even just looking at palm trees. Yeah. <laughs> You're like trees? I was like, whoa, were these always here? Mm, because you oh you didn't notice when you were like. No, up. I didn't. It was just like part of the background. Yeah. And then like even now, like I'm asking you about the right vocabulary or the right like adjective to use, but it's like I was born and raised here, and I lived in the States. I lived in L.A. all my life. Right. And I still have that, like, oh, what's that term in English? Mm-hmm. You know, it's still, like, very hard. Right. Because even when I was doing the trainee stuff and, like, I was doing the acting and modeling, nobody let me really speak English. Right. So. So, like, 
if you're not practicing it Mm -hmm. like yeah you're yeah you're gonna forget it for sure yeah and i guess you know like just speaking about your experience living in korea like through those years I mean, did you ever, like, get a sense of, like, imposter syndrome? I mean, I know, like, we've, like, talked about it a mm-hmm, little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, even just a sense of, like, I w- like maybe this isn't for me. Like, post not debuting. Like, how did you ever have that? Yeah, I think I've always had that. I think I've even had that while I was training. Mm. And I think I still have that till this day. Me too, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're the same. Yeah. It's just hard. It's really difficult to ever i think overcome it Mm -hmm. and i think it's always just gonna be a battle within myself i don't know how i'll overcome it but i'm sure like even today i've just been faking it you know it's like oh me my entire life (laughs) i i honestly think like my mentality of like okay let's be delusional has a lot to do with like nobody knows what they're doing Mm -hmm. our parents yeah raising us no chance they knew what they were doing like right Mm -hmm. that's why you go to like books and use your resources and like all of that but like no i like totally i like totally feel you because i think i mean i'm sure it's like a little different but i think my entire life it was like my value was placed in my intelligence like it was always you're smart Mm. you're smart you're smart i never had that oh must be nice (laughs) <laughs> i mean <laughs> yes because like now i like uh. very much believe that i'm smart mm. but i like was recently listening to a podcast it's uh the Huber- huberman lab and they were talking about how like when you're very much like characterized by like intelligence or like you're smart rather than like the effort that you're putting in if like ever i would get like a bad grade on a test or like a bad grade in general it like directly goes against like who I pride myself and value myself to be and so they actually said like it's it does more harm Mm. because you're constantly trying to live up to your smart rather than oh I'm a hard worker oh I like gave a lot of effort I gave my 100% Mm -hmm. um and so I've actually been trying to like change that mentality because I think there have been like um like instances recently like right i interviewed for a job Mm -hmm. i had a case study interview they Mm -hmm. were literally asking me okay um if you had to break down the financials of our company and like (laughs) tell us like how much money is spent in a day like revenue costs like how would you do that i think like i was i like lacked the confidence because rather than telling myself okay like let's just try Mm -hmm. to get through this it was like i'm smart i should know how to do this Mm -hmm. like it's almost like i was harder on myself yeah in a sense yeah and so i think like i've like built this sense of like imposter syndrome in more recent years because i don't know i like feel a little not as smart anymore (laughs) you know like when your value is placed outside of you it's so fragile Mm -hmm. rather than like oh i'm a valuable human being just because i'm alive Mm -hmm. and here and Mm -hmm. trying you know right um and so I, you know, when I think about like you and your experience, maybe a parallel could be like your value being placed in like how you look, how you dance, how you sing. Like, do you think like you like relate to that statement of like your value being outside of you? I think before I had this new current job, mm. even up till like two years ago, yes. Mm. But now that the sole focus of what i do and my responsibility is uplifting others my mindset has changed and i think we talked talked about it like of course i do have moments where it's like oh my god is this person a effing idiot (laughs) right like why are you so incompetent (laughs) right but i've become better with trying to understand that They come from a place that I don't, you know? Mm. I have something to learn. They have something to learn. It's just, it is what it is. And it's like, why get upset with small things? Right. So I think this new job has really helped me focus on not just me, 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 me. Mm. And more of kind of like the bigger picture. Which I like, I just got chills. Like, I love, like, I love that. Like, I feel like, I feel like the confidence like radiating out of you because like 
right? You, yeah. you just said you weren't like told like you're smart, mm-hmm. but like coming into this job, like, bro, you're freaking killing it. No, like, no, it's not that. I'm faking it. But, <laughs> but you're still, you're sh- even even if it's fake, you are killing it. You it's know? just, I'm just confident with not knowing what I don't know. Ooh, I like that mentality. Because I'd rather learn mm-hmm. than fuck up something really bad and then try to come up with an excuse. It's just like, it's just stupid and it's wasting everybody's time. Right. It takes so much energy. You're stressed. Right. So, So, yeah. Like, let's own up to it. Yeah. And be like, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. I always tell you, like, I'll do something and I'll be like, well, like, I'm not good with math. And Mm. it could be something about, like, even age. And I'm like, just tell me your age. Oh. Like, if they give me your year, I'm like, just give me your age. I'm like, why are you making me do extra (laughs) math? Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's just like, when I don't know something, I'm just like, oh, I don't know what that is. Oh. I I love that. Mm. I think, like coming from a place of curiosity is always like something I try to embody. Mm -hmm. And like, I think admitting that I don't know something is like a big, huge part of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess like for the people, just like, so they have some context. um, So you were on the talent side of the industry, of the entertainment industry, and then you transitioned into the business side of the entertainment industry. Right. Um, And so how did, how did like that come about? Like, did you always, were you always like, oh, okay, now that I've had this experience, I can like transition over or like, was this a backup plan or like, how did, how did you come into your current gig? Okay. This, I don't know how this is going to sound. It might sound like I'm boasting, but I'm not. I, everything really just happened. Like even me Mm. getting into the K-pop trainee stuff just happened winning Miss Korea just like I just went out for I just thought oh it looks pretty why not right and then I was like the tallest of my ear so like I got it and then like they were like oh you should act so I was just like okay right you're just saying yes to yeah I just said yes to everything and like even for this new job honestly I moved back from Korea with no plan Mm. I had no internship no resume I didn't know what a LinkedIn was she's so cute <laughs> she's so naive <laughs> i spent so many freaking hours on linkedin and it stressed me out so i f- almost feel like that's better yeah i just didn't understand how i was like how are people applying for jobs because in korea there's apps oh oh because i mean korea's ahead of mm. ahead of us for sure i was just like oh my god how do i find a job how do i look for jobs like well, where do people apply? And then I found out that there was something called a LinkedIn. Mm. And so then I started trying to learn about what that was and how to do it. And at that time, I still didn't have anything to put on my resume. Right, right. Because your entire experience was like... Being a talent. Right. And nobody needs that in a corporate job. Yeah. Are, like that. I mean, that sounds like very stressful. Yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll just become a Pilates instructor. Because I was like... I've done Pilates for my entire life. Oh, I can see that. Oh, should I move it? All right. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just moving mine. Yeah, 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 I know you're fine. I'm like, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I was just opening my eyes. <laughs> no, because like, I'm so used to it. It's like when we're on stage or like when you're on stage, you know how sometimes you'll do like some like. Like a little look. Like, yeah, like, usa, usa. Yeah, like, like smile. Yofruga, yofruga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was like a signal. <laughs> I respect like- that. I respect that so hard. Oh my gosh. Because I've definitely had those experiences where I'm like, can you freaking talk right now? I'm like, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, okay. What was I saying? Oh, Pilates instructor. No, Pilates instructor. So I thought I was going to be a Pilates instructor. And I was working on getting a certificate. And out of the blue, a friend of mine was moving over to this company. Oh. And she was like, do you have a job? And I was like, no, I don't. She's like, great. I think you'd be perfect for this position. You know entertainment. You've oh. been in it, especially like in the Korea side. And that's when Squid Game was popping off. Oh wow! Th- what a prime time yeah. to get in. Yeah, I didn't. I honestly had no idea. I had zero context about this company. Right. I didn't know what the position was. Right. I just didn't understand it because it was so. There was like, nothing like that in Korea. Right. It's like completely new right right but i needed a job so i was like okay why not i'll take it Mm. and i was like the only thing i was good at was being bilingual 
and which is huge yeah but i didn't know how huge it was right right so just took the job didn't get any training um and it was like a brand new fucking world i fucked up the first week oh that's so that's so freaking terrifying like i didn't leave my desk because i thought what if the phone rings and i can't answer it oh my god so i didn't like go to the bathroom it's like you're just trying to get a uti <laughs> like literally trying to just make your life so hard oh my yeah. god hard it was very hard right. and i usually don't cry easily mm. and even if i do it's like private but i just remember being so overwhelmed so upset that i didn't know anything oh. that i literally cried at my desk like three days straight the best advice that i got from my first mentor in this business if you're gonna cry and find something else oh because you can't survive i see and so from there and from there i just stopped crying oh my god well i mean i i cried in secret like, right you know in the bathroom or right. like on the way home right but i made sure that no one else would ever see me cry but yeah i guess you know being that you came into like more of a business world mm -hmm. um when you came from a background of like being on the talent side did you ever feel imposter syndrome on this side Ooh, because I came from a talent side? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. I actually didn't really open up about my past life. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> That's Celine's song. Uh -huh. um, until recently. Oh, really? Yeah. So none of your coworkers knew? No, not <gasps> until recently. Oh my gosh. What prompted you to share? I just... Because it was like, I would have to start my life story, like, abruptly, like, in the middle-ish end. And then they're like, okay, but, like, what about... Like, how did you grow yeah. up? And I'm just like, uh, you know? Right, like, oh, <laughs> Hannah's being shady. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I just started just telling people, and I was like, yeah, look, like, I had a whole nother life, and I had a whole different career, Whoa. and I've started, I started much later than normal people in the right. industry, but I think it gives me somewhat of an advantage, and it differentiates me, because I'm not saying that they don't respect the craft and the artist, but... Mm -hmm. I think I just have a different empathetic relationship mm. with materials and projects and, you know, maybe the way that a talent might choose to do a certain line or deliver it in a certain way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's like an invaluable perspective, mm -hmm. right? Because I always hear from like actors it's so much easier when like the director when the producers have acted mm -hmm. because like you understand how this works like you understand our struggles and yeah. so right same with you like when i hear you like talk about the scripts that mm -hmm. you read i always like i'm like very ad i admire the lens in which you like read things because mm. i feel like it's more well-rounded than like you know, like, oh, this is a very two-dimensional, mm -hmm. I'm reading a script. It's more so like, oh, I can see this brought to life by this character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can see how this is going to be acted mm -hmm. and whatnot. And so, yeah, totally invaluable. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had literally like, I feel like our experiences have been like flip-flop. Like, mm. right, I was very academic, very right. business-oriented. And now I'm like, oh, I'm forced to be a talent. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, am I feeling a little bit of imposter syndrome oh, it's you like think? maybe yeah i think so because i had my episode with one of my like childhood best friends mm -hmm. like she's known me from fourth grade on mm -hmm. and so we went through all grades together but on that episode chelsea was sharing like oh hannah I used to be so quiet like literally when she met me in fourth grade i was hiding quiet. behind my mom <gasps> I was so shy. Like, I moved to the new school and whatnot. And, you know, thinking back, I'm like, oh, I did used to be really quiet. I was, like, a nice girl, but I was so, I was so scared and shy. Like... I can't imagine. Right? And so, like, you know, I think 
I've grown into myself in mm. more recent years. But I still like have a bit of like, oh, am I made for this? Am I able to mm. do this? Like, have I am I confident enough that like I can just talk and like be entertain like you know entertaining mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for a living like i don't know i don't know if it like is enough but i think like that just kind of comes with the territory like right yeah it's a very like fake it till you make it world mm-hmm. no matter what side you're on creative or business whatnot everything in the middle um uh, maybe you shouldn't fake it till you make it if you're like <laughs> in the medical industry like, maybe you shouldn't figure it out you make it if, like, people's lives are in your hands. Oh, yikes. Oh, my gosh. That's so terrifying. But we're, like, you know, it's not life or death, death for uh-huh. us. Uh-huh. Yeah, I do think it's just, like, you have to just, like, be delusional, put your effort into it, and, like, hopefully things pan out. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I respect you so much, and I learn so much from you literally every day. Even, like, if we're not texting every day, it's just you, to me, from the outside, I don't know what's going inside, but it's, like, you're so confident, right? Not egotistical, but confident. And (laughs) Uh you're so confident to be vulnerable and to also organically let people feel around you safe enough to be vulnerable which is why i think you were able to create prugogi podcast and still continue it and have Mm. people listen to it and like want to be involved in it that's so nice (laughs) don't cry i'm literally gonna cry (laughs) no seriously though wow because i think that that's like at my core like what i wanted to create with this Mm. and so i guess like hearing the validation that like yeah i'm pulling off like you know the environment of like vulnerability and like right i want to always create a safe space for people to like open up Mm -hmm. wow but that's not just here Mm. that's i don't know how many people that listen know you personally but if you don't you should um but yeah, even like people that you're not like close friends with, you just have this aura where people do feel safe. Mm. And it's not where you're like, okay, like do it my way. It's not like that. It's just like you have a leadership aura about you, but wow. it's like comfortable oh, wow. and it's safe. Oh, whoa. And like, even though I may be like a ginormous monster <laughs> compared to you She's not. i feel so protected when i'm with you and i feel like invincible and like maybe that's why i have no filter when i'm with you and i just say shit but like i think that's literally with everybody i've met so many great people through you and the way that i see the relationship and how they are with you and mm. around you is exactly the same oh it's God. consistent oh my god mm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm like, I'm like beyond thankful that like we have like built this incredible friendship. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, I like, I love that you're unfiltered. (laughs) Like, I love that like you're able to like a hundred percent say anything, literally anything. And I'm like, oh. Sometimes I shouldn't though. No, sometimes you shouldn't. (laughs) Absolutely. There are a lot of times where I'm like, this, this is staying here, but. It's staying here and it's safe. Uh, like, uh, you will never, yeah. you will never get canceled yeah. in my circle. Maybe you're another, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not when I'm around. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, I'm like, I'm like so thankful for this friendship. Me and too. like, so thankful to like, see you like thriving. Like, Same. you know, I didn't, I didn't know you pre- mm entertainment, working, grind era, <laughs> boss woman, boss babe. <laughs> girl boss <laughs> woman woman api yeah. era um but like i'm so like happy because i feel like all of your talents and like your will and like your kind-heartedness of like wanting to lift up talent is like finally like 
able to like shine through in this very tough industry and so yeah, i applaud you because like genuinely without people like you like oh stop now this is when we start like giving compliments yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. we're gonna end it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on oh my god thank you for having me i always love it I talking love to you, you. <laughs> i'm like always like hey hannah what's up hey, she's hannah. like um it's like barbie yeah <laughs> <laughs> hi hi hannah hi hannah oh my gosh um but yeah if you guys want to give hannah a follow on the socials where can they find you i only have instagram but it's private okay. so if you want to find me find me but if you don't totally don't. fine okay got it um but other than that you guys can give us a follow I'm going to do the whole like, comment, subscribe, of course. Mm -hmm. um, ask because it helps us out a lot. And so, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen. Um, and, yeah, thank you guys for your continued support. And we will see you next week. Yay! <laughs> Are we starting to sound like... <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs>